I stand firmly in the fact that I'm one of the best to ever do this for the culture, for my coast, and for my city. This is the Best Rapper in L.A. Podcast. 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 And I'm your host, Merce. 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 What up, though? What up, though? What up, though? What up? We are back. Murray's Revenge, this is the end. Last episode, last song on the album. It's a Nautilus flip. And we'll talk about the actual song first. I'm not a, a beat head, uh, but I knew that coming into this, like, this had been done by Pete Rock and Ghostface, and I think numerous other people. Those are two members of Pete Rock, I believe, for the Soul Brother or whatever the compilation or whatever album was. And Daytona 500 by Ghost. I think the, for some reason, I feel like they were doing a car race in the Pete Rock video as well. Corrupt rapped on it. Great MCs had rapped over this sample. Great producers had flipped this sample. like nice not that he did the best that's a matter of opinion but i had never heard it like this gave it to me which is a test uh, as I listen back to it now I think I did alright uh, he didn't let me this is all one take and I punched at the last like eight bars or so once again like I reading this off a of paper in a basement in Raleigh North Carolina or Durham I don't know the difference no disrespect the premise of the album was uh, revenge for my homie that uh, was murdered this was supposed to be the album I did with him. I've been preparing to do this podcast and thinking about him. And I always use the term I was living on borrowed time. I was living like there was no tomorrow. I would, this was it for me. Everything still, I feel, was extra credit. By now, I had made a short film. I had rapped with a very, one of my favorite wrestlers. I had done a song with E-40. Like so baby, what you want? Yeah, don't play with me, homie. H-U-S-T-L-E, hustler. You'll never find a dime that ain't mine, motherfucker. Oh, not to be broken, have to stroll like a sucker. So baby, what you want? Yeah, don't play Check with it out. me, homie. Before the water ain't gonna give it to you late. late. Before the water gonna give it to you straight. Way right. before 1988, Eight. I used to quarterback weight. Wait. Deal with whatever it had to take to put out my first tape. tape. Trying to outsmart the boys in blue, never knew how much I made. Man. I used to throw them off with my glasses and my high top fade and I never pedal with me just that ain't one yo-yo man that's off white coca leaf stay blur my da 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 hovers between my booty cheeks the same old clothes for weeks we gritty and sabalosa a turfed out motherfucker and a granada smoking rope sipping on King Cobra I had been in the source I had been on MTV I had done I had done everything porn stars everything I thought I wanted to do I had done 
My mother was proud of me. I had made money. I had more money than I was using. Yeah, I was really just rapping for fun at this point. My desire to rap is different from a lot of folks I know, from everyone I know. Uh, everyone's, you know, if you get into the intricacies, everyone's is basic, you know, it's different, but it's basically this. I don't care for the spotlight. I'm not a jock who hurt his knee or didn't make D1 ball or whatever it is that was trying to find those glory days. I don't like competing. Uh, I guess I'll do a post on Instagram a day, hopefully, um, if I get the time. But uh, I don't believe the competition is the crux of hip hop. I believe hip hop is four elements, artistic elements and forms of expression. If you call it a culture, subculture, that's fine. Everything else we bring to it, the gang shit, the street shit, the, comp- the competitive nature, the egos, those are all human things or human constructs. Those aren't hip hop. I found a way to express myself and I'm a very unique individual. I stopped battling on my first album. I'm a violent, uh, competitive, I don't want to say competitive, but I'm a violent, fucked up person. And when I found out that I, I felt like I was battling because I just, I stopped fighting. And what I want to do is be less violent. So I don't want to use hip hop as a guise for me to continue to be violent and thinking that I'm working something out now that I'm just battling. What makes you want to be competitive? What makes you angry? What makes you want to hit someone? Like those are the things that I was trying to deal with. And I think saying that that's hip hop is, you know, some people aren't as in tune, but but it's a crutch. Whether you realize it or not, you want to compete for something else. There's another reason you're competitive. It could be naturally in you. Uh, my friend that passed away, I really feel like I tell a story to people I really know and I'll get a little bit into it, but he, I was like natural born killer. Like he, he, there are warriors born. I believe there are people that exist to take people out. I believe he was one of those people. Um, not in a way, in a defensive way. He was a protector. He was, that was his thing. Some men are providers. Some men are, are, are you know, they're all different things. Some he, women are this, you know, not every woman is a mother. In the traditional sense, this man was a, a protector. He was a warrior. He was, you know, all the time. Like we, like something would happen. Not all the time. Whenever something would go down, I'd be like, all right, I'm riding with you. My scary ass. Like I'm riding with you. Let's do it. And instead of saying you, you're scary, which he probably could, he knew, you know, or whatever, or you're not built like that, he was just like, I do my dirt all by my lonely. We met because of hip hop. And we weren't, that's another thing too, is when you get around people who really will will dust a motherfucker off, there's no competition. He never competed with me. I never once felt he was jealous of my success. And I think he understood me too. And if you really understand me, like, you know that I don't like the spotlight. I don't rap to be competitive. I don't, I stop rapping. I rap to be the best me. I rap to help people not feel alone. I rap because I just have something in me that wants to put words together. It's a natural thing. The Bob Marley quote still, how long have you been a Rasta? He said, ever since. That's how long I've been an MC. I've been a rapper. I will be a rapper forever, ever since. How long have you been a Rasta? Well, I've been a Rasta from ever since. You know? But it's not how long I've been a Rasta. It's how long it takes to grow up. Because what he is is what he is. From beginning to the end, you can never change because if you even adapt things later out, you can filter right out. So we're just Rasta from creation, you know? I'm compelled. It's not concocted. And a lot of people sit in rooms with other people and concoct and compare, and it's contrived. And that's okay. But I think your art would be better and your life would be better, in my opinion. If you were to get to the core of what makes you angry, why are you sad? Why are you hurt? Make that song. But instead, as long as we can compete with each other, we don't have to deal with the real issues. You know, why do white Americans, or I was watching someone in Liverpool that made a cover of Shook Ones. Why do they feel so comfortable covering Shook Ones? It's a song about black homicide. And we champion them, champion that. Why, what's wrong? The beat's dope. Mob Deep are amazing lyricists and producers, musicians. We're not, and I think even Prodigy, a lot of Prodigy and Havoc's music does 
to go a little deeper. And on the surface, to some people it may seem to something, but man, on the fucking HNIC record, man, I love to watch the growth of Prodigy. But what I'm saying is, there's a lot of posturing in rap, and I don't fault anyone. I don't think anyone's less of a man. I was, I think, fortunate to find an alternative and using my art to all oh, this is trauma processing. I feel like I gave too much of this man's story here and everywhere, but this is my therapy because I don't think there are therapists equipped to deal with what I'm going through. I feel it's extremely unique what a lot of black Americans go through. It probably would take one of us or someone to study, but th I think there's new things being injected to it all the time. It's an evolving science, the psychology of, of black Americans. It's extremely unique. So when we get back to hip hop as an art, it's National Art Day. It's not competition. This battle may be exciting to you, and that's fine. I don't judge you. Enjoy. These museums that put hip hop up, that's another thing. Like that may be exciting. And it is exciting, and I'm tempted to go for myself, but I don't want my children. I, this is my opinion. Part of me wanted them to go to see it, and like I have a little piece, I think, in the one that's in LA right now, and you know. But then part of me doesn't, I don't want it to seem dead. There's a lot of dead shit in museums a lot of times. Overall, for a kid that doesn't understand, like, there are new exhibits in museums by living artists, I, I'm aware. But overall, when something is finished and done, and I want them to see hip hop as living and breathing. I don't want it to be an exhibit in a museum yet. They see Basquiat in the museum. We go to, you know, we look at stuff from the pyramids and, and Da Vinci and, and Monet and things like that. The tar pits and shit like that. That's museum. To me, it's dangerous. And I, and I, you know, would be very late nineties, mid nineties hip hop to say that it's a conspiracy to kill hip hop. Yeah, okay, the, the negative imagery and, and message, yeah, that's killing hip-hop. And then the real heads are like, okay, it's in the museums. And these, like, no one's saying, here, kids, play with this. Not enough people are saying, here, kids, play with this. Make it your own. Because now B-Boy is in the Olympics. For this sport, born on the streets, being part of the Olympic Games is a huge opportunity. The exposure and introducing break in a sporting context is great recognition. Being in the Games today is recognition of 40, 50 years of existence. The best MCs are selling you fucking tennis shoes and Coca-Cola. Firm come first, obey your thirst. Nas and AZ all day it hurts. Obey your thirst, kid. Sprite, baby. I'm on the brink, thinking I need a chill drink to replenish. Then we'll drink Sprite until it's finished. Relaxing the mind, taking off the summer edge. In emergencies, first obey what your thirst says. <laughs> Twisted. To meet the Carmel King of the Castle, keeping his tight CL smooth, sipping on Spritite. It's the Mechadon never swerving untitled. Uh, Knowing commercial rap needs to woo, be recycled. Uh, yeah. Collecting cans for Nick's picks, my latest LP. Now obey my thirst, some precise. Got the knack to rock, I'm steady heating up the spot. The chocolate boy wonder making heads bop. Plus, I. <laughs> you know, the best graffiti writers are in museums. Graffiti writers are doing a really good job of keeping it authentic. Though. I'll tell you that. B-Boys and, and graffiti writers are some of my favorite. It's becoming really commercial. Make sure that you keep it malleable. Keep it art and realize what you're bringing to it is not what it is. You do not define it by your lens. Uh, propaganda gave me by Terraform Coffee, by the way. If you want some cold brew kit, I need one right now. Uh, <laughs> He was talking about uh, his religion. He saw it as a facet. And he was telling me about a very interesting facet of or sect of Christianity. And he's like, yeah, I, I feel him. I understand it, but it's not my view, but I, I get it. Every, it's like a diamond and everyone's seeing it. You know, that's Christianity. That's religion for me. Everyone sees God or God is the diamond. You see it through different from your perspective. That's absolutely true. And I feel like, like this is hip hop. I don't want to argue with you. I like what the Rasta them say. It's about it's reasoning, you know. I just want to reason with you. And through the reasoning, we can evolve. This is the reason I believe what I do. And as long as you have reasoning behind, sound logic behind your beliefs, I can respect that. This was my goodbye 
to my friend. Not really. I thought it was goodbye, but it was the beginning of me dealing with a lot of unpacking. This was me when I had my tray moment. I got out the car, figuratively and literally, chose not to kill the people who killed my friend. Let me out. Don't. Let me out. That's another thing, too. If you ever really wonder about gangbanging in Los Angeles, this was 2003, early 2000s, before social media. We know who did what and when, just with telephones. No picture. Now, bro, I seen, you know, like, I seen pictures of bodies. A home, little homie show me pictures like, yeah, we got such and such and such. So look at this. I've seen that now. This is before that I could even have that type of uh, verification. We knew who did what to who. There was no question where they were, who they were, when they, all of it. How come the police didn't act? It's not our job to know that. It's your job to know that. And I'm not going to insult your intelligence by thinking you don't know or can't find out. There's no desire to find out. You want my friends and I talking about how to do X, Y, and Z. Because then there's another body and there's another case and less black men on the streets. If you ever question or think people are exaggerating, come talk to me. Listen to what I've said over the years. I don't want to make it up. I don't celebrate it. I don't fabricate it for validation. And we go back to the original. I don't rap for that reason. I got on this beat, though. Back to the music. And I knew that I had something to say. I had to say something because hip-hop motherfuckers were listening. But really, it wasn't even about trying not to rap about rap, man. I really had grown out of that. Like, thanks to Slug, a lot of it is due to, thanks to him. I don't have to rap about that, man. Being great at rapping. Idea, Ali, Grouch, Mystic Journeyman. So many people were, you know, my circle, I was around people who found ways to make great songs to show their lyrical and ability, their pen, as the kids say, without having to be competitive. And still, we're all competitive behind the scenes. I, and I try not to be, and we'll get into that on the uh, Patreon podcast about pay dues. That's why I was, to me, the one to bring everybody together because I wasn't competing. But a lot of my friends were definitely fuck them and blah, blah, blah. Oh, cool, we're cool in person, but then secretly fucking what men like to say is women being catty or bitchy. Oh, God, especially with producers. I say about producers all the time. Producers, that was another thing I knew was coming. Like, there's homies that, oh, 316 is a classic to a lot of people. Man, Knife, use the same drums on your whole album. I- I'm not listening to that, bro. Basquiat used the same paint for a lot of I don't give a fuck. This is art, man. The criticism takes away from it. Same thing with love. I'm, I work on that all the time. Being critical takes away the magic out of the love. It takes the magic out of the art, the competitive sees capitalism, commercialism, consumerism, criticism, com- competitive com- com- competition, all of it takes, you know, as much as the fake crip in me hates to say something bad about C's, <laughs> the C's take a lot away from the community. Oh, man. So this is this Nautilus sample was important. I knew I had to wrap my ass off. I wanted to wrap my ass off, but I wanted to keep it in the purpose of this. So whatever I'm talking at the beginning, let me get into it. This was a challenge. This beat is, I'm rhythmically challenged. And as for now I've finally gotten to find my pocket. I'm still not as good as I'm going to get with my cadence and rhythm, but I'm good. Way better than for real. This was challenging because this is like, like 
rhythmically through a drum machine down the stairs. That's what it sounds like to me. So L.A. and this were challenging to write to. Um, at the beginning, I go, they f- bleep it out was fucking Murray. Then they bleep out the, we bleep out the fucking, and then the, yeah, like that's always me, like getting my voice ready and still I end up with this nasal, whatever the fuck, but I attempt to rap with my um, deep voice. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Once again. Um, but all this is just me warming up because I think I'm just going to get one take at it and then we'll go back and do it again. Ha 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 ha. But yeah, fucking Murray is what we call each other. I still call him fucking Murray. Shut the fuck up, fucking Murray. Me and Nice. I still call him Murray even though it's stuck as my name for whatever I, we talk. His family believes that that was my name. May still, so a lot of his family may still believe his mother and father call me Murray. Um, his wife, children call me Murray as, as if that was my name. My government name is Nicholas, by the way. So, but and nowhere in my in is my is Murray anywhere in my name. If you're just catching on to the podcast, I'm a hood legend. You should feel threatened. Front, I'm gonna show you what's good in a second. The best in the business. I mean, what is it? The dopest MC to walk, talking and living. A white bride screen with a blockbuster signature. Every new line I speak should be in cinemas. Champion sound. I win with words like you finally talked your girl into sleeping with a friend of hers. Oh yeah, I'm off on the good one. Mama's so proud of what a boy from the hood does. Got off the meat and I got my mind right. I got out these streets. I got my grind like I got on these beats. I gotta come tight. It's gotta be me. It's gotta be nice. Your boy dropped some stuff and it was probably nice. But they need a little help and a lot of advice. Quit while you're ahead. You ain't seeing no bread and don't sleep on us. You can sleep when you're dead and grateful you didn't live life hateful change for the better like the weather in april food for the soul grab a head grab a plate for a heart full of hate is a waste and disgraceful Ugh. don't it just turn your stomach when a brother only want to see another brother plummet come with your best so you can lose like the rest straight shots when i shoot how we do on the west yeah and then we get into it i'm a hood legend you should feel threatened front i'm gonna show you what's good in a second the best in the business. I mean, what is it? It's from, I was listening to a lot of Mr. Fab and hyphy music at the time. So I was like, what is it? What is it, man? What, what isn't it? All that stuff. Um, was well, you know, best in the business. I mean, what is it? I enunciate too much for it to sound hood or hyphy. Well, I mean, what is it? The dopest MC to walk, talk, and to live it. A white, I write, and I said white there too. It's, I write widescreen is a hard one to enunciate A-E-I-O-U um, something Aesop taught me and then you stick your lips out if any MC so A open your mouth wide E open your mouth wide smile I open your mouth O A-E-I-O-U and put your lips together for the O with you should didn't know that tactic and uh, yeah I write widescreen I messed that up you hear it he let it, sl- and he didn't let it slide. He made me not do it. I take with a blockbuster signature. Get it, movies, blockbuster video, blockbuster films, widescreen. Every new line I speak should be in cinema- cinemas. Get it, champion sound. I win with words. I think this is a little shade for uh, who was it? Did did champion sound? Somebody, I think Mad Lib. Some I don't know. Champion sound. I don't know. Or a shout out, shade shout out. I don't remember at this point. Definitely a shout out now. I have no ill feelings about anyone. I win with words. I mean, it was a shout out. Like you finally talked your girl into sleeping with a friend of hers. Get it? You win with words. You win. Funny enough, when I definitely did get propositioned, I, I, I've never ever had one of those things, and I don't not an interest of mine. But it sounded good. Like you finally talk your girl in the sleep with a friend of hers. Oh yeah, I'm off on a good one. Mama's so proud of what a boy from the hood done. Got off the meat and I got my mind right. I got off this, it says streets. I'm not trying to, it was, I fucked up streets. I got my grind like I got on these beats. I got a rhyme tight. I want to say rhyme tight. See how, got off the meat, got my mind right. Now I'm vegan. 
2005, full vegan. I've been off and on vegetarian since 93. Got my mind right. I got out these streets. I got my grind like I got on these beats. I got I, I got a rhyme tight. It's got to be me. It's got to be knife. Your boys dropped some stuff and it was probably nice, but they need a little help and a lot of advice. I'm killing it to me. So I'm, quit while you're ahead. You ain't seeing no bread. And don't sleep. This other bread is still like, I'm still like, shot like uh, Mr. Fab, F-A-B, Forever After Bread. Still little things that only I would recognize when I'm putting in there because I got to the, what is it in the front to me, which I still got from Fab. Fab is one of my favorite artists at this time. My dope rights flow tight and my style is ill. My show hype flow like sick. Wild as Bill, the strobes like go hype. Show shine the deal. No hype, no low life. Mine's is real, so don't play me, dog. You already know. You ain't seeing no bread. Quit while you're ahead. You ain't seeing no bread. And don't sleep on us. You can sleep when you're dead and grateful. I sleep when you're dead is a title. I think, I think that's, yeah, that's, uh, I was talking to LP around this time and, I inadvertent. I think I was when I inadvertently named that album because we were just talking, and I said something about "I'll sleep when I'm dead" or something. Said, I, and I said, "I'll sleep when you're dead" by accident. And he was like, "Oh shit!" So don't sleep on us. You can sleep when you're dead. So that was illusion of that. I think that I've been out by then. We had already had the conversation. And grateful, you didn't live life hateful. And that was another thing too. At this time, I'm leaving Def Jux. I'm signing. A lot of my contemporaries are upset with Jux, and people are talking shit. And I just would never. I always saw whatever money things didn't work out on uh, with L or any label I was on, I tried to see it as a, I'm grateful for the opportunity you gave me. I always tell people I can never speak bad on L because I wouldn't have been, I wouldn't have got this deal if it wasn't for 316. I would. He funded me being able to do the things that, it was my ideas, a lot of it, but it was his idea to give me a chance to, and a platform for my ideas. So no, there's no amount of a, a money that can make that happen. It had to be him to do that for me, in my eyes. It had to happen that way. And if money becomes the issue, then money or fame were never the reasons for me to do this. They were results of me following my calling, my compulsion, seeing things through and trying to be as good of a person as possible. So that's why, like, don't sleep much, you sleep when you're dead. And grateful, I'm grateful to Elle and, and so many other people that helped me along the way. I didn't live life hateful. Change for the better like the weather in April. Food for the soul. Go ahead, grab a plate full. A heart full of hate is a waste and disgraceful. Ugh. Don't it just turn your stomach when a brother only want to see another brother plummet? Come with your best so you could die like the rest. Straight shots when I shoot how we do on the West. Yeah. Let's love each other, man. And that's like, you know what I mean? Make your best music. Do your best art. I always never understood being mad at someone for money or chasing money that's behind you. Back to Fab and like he's one of the person I, I definitely look up to. But Fab after bread, like go forward after bread. You know what I mean? That's another thing I like about what resonates with me with Rastas. Like every they don't say backwards. Everything is forward. They don't say back in the day or I'll call you back. I'll call you forward. Like everything is forward and words are powerful. You know, and it may it's maybe cute or funny to you know, but I I respect that. Like. Everything is forward. Everything is going towards the light, towards movement, towards progression. You can't change the past. So I've always been a, you owe me money, you owe me money. As long as I'm capable, I'm able, I'm going to go chase more money or chase, just chase. Uh, and then instead of chasing money, it's like chasing my passion, chasing my ideas, chasing creation. Always work for me. I was like, always, not going to work, God willing. Yeah, and then the breakdown happens. Yeah. Might be man, meant the MC, but Merc sums it up best now. Wouldn't you agree?
three out. Step to the plate like it's and one and straight. Throw the mic around your neck and then bounce it off your face with grace. The ace in the hole, replacing the old. Cause the new generation got a taste for some soul. Hold on to opinions till I tell you to have one. That mic wasn't hot until the spot till I grabbed one. Off the stand, now it's off the hook. And when the beat is this nuts, then I'm off the books. Meaning off the head, freestyle to make it bread. And I should have been in the movie, but I made my own instead. Still pioneering with this independent hustle when your mic cord is much too short. For you to tussle for the man that throw like 40 water For the remembrance of every hood soldier that died in ghetto tenements Innocent to proving guilty Should I die? Don't look for the dude that killed me Look for a brighter tomorrow And in spite of the sorrow, live every moment to the fullest So your life isn't hollow And you can holler out my name from the top of the game And should you pass, homie, I'ma promise I'll do the same For if a soul is avenged through the deeds of a friend The success has always been the best form of revenge The end Second verse you know who he might be, man, myth, the MC. That was something from An One. I was so addicted to An One videos um, since the first tape in 98. So with King Tech and DJ Revolution, and y'all about to view the An One mixtape on video. Coming to you live. Keep it banging. Yo, 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 what's up? This is Wanye Morris, Juan Moore Entertainment, Voice to Men. We over here just vibing that mass MASPD, checking out the N1 compilation. My man Free, we up in this joint. Why don't y'all fill it with us? What? A skip tape, as they say. I still have that on my wall to this day. To this day, Ray for Austin was someone that was really inspirational to me because I feel like underground rap was kind of like streetball and one was special that way to me because like indie hip hop was on the rise and so was indie basketball and it was a lot less competitive it was just about being creative and expressing yourself and there's a little competition like mini competition but it's not a group of men wishing the downfall and practicing and studying the film of other men on how to take she's louise man like it was in the moment like I like freestyle battle off the head battle I still might do one of those one day but like Man, like, you know, and even now, like, when they do battle rap, like, spending that much time, man, I just couldn't. For me, I'm not judging anyone else. That's, you know, a lot of people, like I said, they have their demons, or they may naturally be just warriors and competitive. I'm, bro, I couldn't leave to go to a studio and or stay, just spend weeks writing about another man and, and negative things about that man or a human, woman, the dog. I don't, like, when... You know, a Dame Dash called me on this too. It's like, at one point, like, you're a vegan, right? Like, what the fuck are you doing, man? <laughs> like, this is me. This is my path, you know? So I liked N1 because I still do. I do I do watch sports. I do like competitive stuff. But N1, like, really struck a chord with me because it was creative. And the MC, I just try to look at it. I think I'm, I hope I'm not crediting the wrong person. It's MC Rail. He'd be on the side, like, running with the competition. And the MC was, like, he was hyped it up. And so he's the, so allegedly the one that, like named half man, half amazing, hot sauce professor, like all these names, a lot of them escalate. Like he came up with them, God rest his soul. So he used to say, you know who he might be, man, myth, half man, half amazing. Like, that was his thing. Like when someone would be doing something dope, like, you know who he might be. Uh, and I, I, he had to be an N1 nerd to get us. I don't know if anyone got it. Uh, you know who he might be, man, myth, the MC. But Merce sums it up best now. Would you agree? I step to the plate like it's and one and plate is, I thought it was purposely like step to the plate like it's and one and straight. Throw the mic around your neck and then bounce it off your face with grace. The ace in the hole, replacing the old because the new generation got a taste for some soul. Hold on to it. It's me like acknowledging I'm carrying on like we're carrying on that P Rock and CL Smooth legacy like that wasn't Man, that album, Main Agree, my P-Rock and Seals move literally gets better to me every year. I did not like it at all in 94. Every year, I want to hear it. Man, it's such a great album. If you could check it out. Making the Soul Brothers the one that gets all the praise because it has reminisce on you, over you, and a, lot, uh, a couple of, uh, Straighten It Out, I think, a couple other classics. But man, they were on to something. The one that was on the Poetic Justice soundtrack, I can't think, One in a Million? Listen, it drives you out. One in a million. 
Rolling from the Vernonville, I work it out and wait to get curled. I'm here to sell more joints than we are the world. Flows and old bros and new foes are open and close shows. So never knows attention. The back is representing the uptown jazz sound and chicks start mingling. Now let's watch a flick by John Singleton. Keep rocking, see yo smooth is in the Mecca house building. Cause this funk is one in the million. One in the million. And then from there, it just, man, to me, they stopped at their height. That I don't know if that gets praised as an amazing second album, but it's phenomenal. But replacing the old, because a new generation has the taste for some soul, keeping the boom bap alive in a new way. Hold on to opinions till I tell you to have one, is what I meant to say. That mic wasn't hot in the spot till I grabbed. Fuck this lineup too, he didn't let me take it again. Off the stand, now it's off the off the hook. I mean, the party's off the hook now that I took the mic off stand. And when the beat is this nuts beat nuts, then it's off the books. You better watch your step. Then it's off the books, meaning off the head. Oh shit, go back to the and one and straight throw the mic around your neck and then bounce it off your face with grace. Also around this time with the peak, I think this and one was doing tours. And uh, why I'm not a uh, Laker fan. The one Laker game I ever went to as a kid because it was so expensive. I, li- I, I could literally touch the ceiling. Last row in the form. Years later, and one comes to the form and I buy floor seats and I'm sitting next to Ray Frost. And he walks in and this is also like, when I say I'm living the dream or living on borrowed time or like living like there's no tomorrow, like I have no more goals when I'm making this record. I've done it all that I wanted to do. I have floor seats at the and one game next to Ray Frost and some, i say, exotic looking, oh, exotic, not from her ethnicity, but I think from surgery, like Miami type girl, BBL, whatever. Could have been all real. I don't know. But like, uh, let's say voluptuous, I think two voluptuous women, like, I, I, I think they're with him. Like, I, I'm just sitting next to Ray Frost and, 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 and hot chicks. Floor seats, the floor, front row floor at, and one i don't give a fuck about the end like this is i've done everything i am in, on so that line was also a reference to that i believe or it happened either before or after but like i could buy all the merch i want this is like i want to have more money than i know more than i don't say than since because i didn't buy anything stupid I, I you know i still have my professor jersey everything i bought from that and one game i still have um because i valued it. it was a moment to me and that's, and you never know, like, who, I didn't think it'd be cool, like, throwback uh, steez. But yeah, like, me having a professor jersey is always, like, people who know, know. When I wear that, it's like, whoa, where the fuck did that come from? But yeah, like, whatever on the, drop whatever on the tickets, drop whatever. Like, went to the merchant, bought everything. Knowing me, probably bought some shit for some kids I didn't know. It's something you also have to learn to be careful with because some parents don't want their kids to have shit. And when you try to come up and be kind, you know, you see, like, Shaq in the Walmart type shit. Especially black mom, like a lot of, I don't play that shit. It's insulting to some people and some kids, they don't want their kids to have all that shit. Don't buy my kids shit. <laughs> not that I have, not my ego, but they just don't need any more things. When the beat is this nuts, then it's off the books. Meaning off the head, freestyling, making bread. And I should have been in the movie, but I made my own instead. That was a slight to this movie they had called Freestyle. And they had me. I believe we talked about another episode going i had to go to the city i hated going to the city i went to the city to san francisco from the east bay bro that's just a hike it's cold i was not into the vibe i think like i grew to learn learn love san francisco over the years but at that time man coming from east oakland to the city to film they had me freestyle in this room they had these lights and they had me rap for like an hour off the head or something we're gonna put you in this documentary and then i ended up on the cutting room floor and I was like, man, fuck these people. I was so hot about that. And it was just like, for what, man? I didn't, they didn't think I was good enough. And that's okay to be in someone else's film. I made my own movie. I rapped with John Cena. Like I was doing, I don't even remember who was in the movie, but I, okay. 
there's two different art forms, written rhymes and there's freestyle. The reality of how hip hop got started is beautiful. It almost looks like a fight. Rap is poetry, poetry is uh, expressing yourself. The goal of freestyling is to throw something out once and you can never do it again. That's what makes it free. We're just bold and brazen and just in your face. Yeah, rhymes go mad. Yo, they sample it from the records, then they take it to the past. You know, but I, I took my shot and like now, you know, whatever. No one, like, it's a, it was a sub. He knew, I knew, and I was more mad that not that like, well, don't waste my time. Just don't ask me. I'm okay. I don't need to be known for freestyle. Now I'm known for setting a Guinness World Record. I freestyled on Twitch. I'm one of the best rappers on Twitch. Like I, I'm all right and I'm gonna be all right. And I was always kind of confident in that. But the fact that you asked me to do something and I went somewhere I didn't want it, my time, don't waste my time time is precious to me even back then it was less about not putting me in the movie because i'm not the great yeah they had great freestylers in the movie some were better than me however don't ask me and i want something to show for my time and effort and i know that i'm good enough but also you know you got to be like you know they're lost like oh my grandfather has a famous saying you're gonna need me before i need you and i've always tried to make that true i think my name you know could have helped with along with the other great names in it. It wouldn't have hurt to keep me in there. But, you know, also too, it might have been like him being, he never said that to me, but it would have been just like, oh, maybe it wasn't the best look. You know, maybe well, I was an off day and I would have looked bad next to other people. Off the head, freestyle and make it bread. And I should have been in the movie, but I made my own instead. Still pioneering with this independent hustle when your mic cord is much too short for you to tussle for the man that pro like 40 water. Born in remembrance of every hood soldier that died in ghetto tenements, innocent to proven guilty. Should I die? Don't look for the dude that killed me. Look for a brighter tomorrow. And in spite of the sorrow, live every moment to the fullest so your life isn't hollow. And you can holler out my name from the top of the game. And should you pass, homie, I'ma promise I'll do the same for if a soul is avenged through the deeds of a friend. The success has always been the best form of revenge. The end. Freestyle I should have been in the movie, but I made my own instead. Still pioneering with this independent hustle. And as your mic cord is way too short for you to tussle with the man that flow like 40 water poured in remembrance of every hood soldier that died in ghetto tenements, innocent till proven guilty. <sighs> for the man that flow, because your mic cord is way, still pioneering with this independent hustle. Um, so, uh, Too short in E40, I saw only talking about being pioneers, so that was a shout out to them. Your mic cord is much too short for you to tussle for the man that flow like with the man that flow. That's what I said. For the man not. I don't know if I was trying. I was like, I fucked up. I didn't get another take. For the man that flow of 40 water poured in remembrance of every hood soldier that died in ghetto tenements because they pour out of 40s for the homie. I'm lyrically, this album is me pouring out of 40 in remembrance of my homie. He loved E-40 as much as I did. Like, I saw us as too short in E-40, me more the too short, and he had more of a sporadic staccato style. So it means something. It's a metaphor, lyric, you know, it's a lot of, it's a triple entendre, I don't know. Your mic cord in your arms too short to box a guy. Your mic cord is too short to tussle with the man that flow like 40 water, poured in remembrance of every hood soldier that died in ghetto tenements, innocent to proven guilty. Should I die, don't look for the dude that killed me. Look for a brighter tomorrow. And in spite of the sorrow, live every moment to your fullest because so your life is a hollow. And you can holler. And I meant to say, I'm going to holler out your name from the top of the game. And you could, no, sorry. Yeah, you could, you could holler out your name from the top of the game. Should you pass on me, I'm going to promise I'll do the same. For if a soul is avenged through the deeds of a friend, then success has always been the best form of revenge to end. That was when I came up with the name for the album. I came up with that bar that me and I throw on the phone. And I said, we want to call it Murray's Revenge. And I hung up and I came with that bar. I might have even wrote it down back then. That was my goal with this record, is to make this my most successful record. And it didn't outsell 316, but there's a, numerous reasons that we'll get into for why it didn't. But it did take me to another level. It took me to the top of the game, so to speak. Um, my first major label deal, money, established paid dues. A lot of things came out of this. And had I chose to follow my, uh, what I would call my lower emotions, I may not be here. You know, the LA video, 
we didn't talk about, you know, but you know, like he's in it, his, 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 the program from his funerals in it, his daughters are in it, brought cameras to the hood, you know, I brought John Cena to the hood. This was my way of giving back. I pay dues. Eventually to me, I, I gave a lot of people from my neighborhood and other neighborhoods, mostly other neighborhoods, not a lot of rappers from my neighborhood at the time, opportunities. It was really about giving back. I had gotten a lot and I would say everything I wanted out of the game at that point. I'm going to keep rapping because it's fun and I'm making money and I, but I had to, I had to do pay dues. I had to do different things um, because it wasn't about me being the best rapper. I had to fight to get my, you know, their ninth had to not fight, but like convince me to put my face on the cover. I'm not a spotlight person. And I should have been in the movie, hear me coming up as a double inverse. And I should have been in the movie, but I made my own instead. Still pioneering with it. That was the punch. Because he did, he took this as all one take. I didn't even keep rapping after that. Off the head, freestyle to make his bread. And I should have been in the movie, but I made my own instead. Still pioneering with this independent hustle. With um, but yeah, you can hear me say like, uh, hold on to opinions till I tell you to have one. I think that was another Tarantino line um, that I was putting in there. This new generation got a place on the soul. And I have a really, uh, my, 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 uh, what's it called? Like a twitch is I have to rhyme the beginning of the next line with the last bar. And it doesn't have to be that way, but I'll, I've like taste of the new generation has the taste of the soul. Hold on soul and hold on. It doesn't have to do that, but I want to do that. And I don't, I do that so often and it slows down my writing process and it doesn't always make me have the best choices, but it helps me remember it too. Hold on to opinions till I tell you to have one. That Mike wasn't hot into the spot. Hot into the spot. I don't, I, he, this is the last song on my major label debut over a well known sample, and he's not letting me do my vocals over it. To this day, it's not in the pocket as much. It, the, the thing, you know, whatever. But people like the song. I think they would have liked it better if I had a, ton, a couple more takes. That's just me. Who knows? It was a well known sample. Bob James is very hip hop friendly, apparently. So let's talk about Nautilus for a second. This song is amazing. Tell me about making that record. And uh, uh, Nautilus, the biggest feel is a groove, the Idris Muhammad's feel, but it also has a kind of mystery about it that I think attracted the hip hop producers mm -hmm. because it was cinematic. Yeah. Yes, and it was both funky groove. Uh, and this is only me trying to analyze it way after the fact, <laughs> after I found out that all these people sampled it. Right. Why? You know, I, I'm, right. I'm, I'm still asking that question. But right. I think those elements of the, the first, the groove, Idris, and Gary, and we're establishing this pretty simple, repetitive kind of groove, mm -hmm. easy to chop up, whatever. Right, right. whatever. And then right. over the top of that was some strings, and I believe it might have been an ARP Odyssey sound that Creed heard that made it sound like a submarine. Right. Uh, and all of that was a throwaway tune that we didn't think we'd get any airplay, mm -hmm. and we didn't, mm -hmm. uh, because of Feel Like Making Love, my, instrumental version got all the airplay Beautiful for the record. most part and that's the part the DJs paid mm -hmm. attention to and Nautilus was hidden side B the last mm -hmm. cut to me it was just I had fun doing it but I didn't think anybody would pay that much attention to it there was a limited budget for this album at first they were only going to clear a certain amount of samples there's a sample on every song we told them make sure you clear this one you're not, this one's not sliding under the radar. This, so we're having these arguments. The PM Don tension is building up. There are two young executives here that will remain nameless, mostly because of my stupidity. But this is their first thing, album. I'm on the same label with John Frushanti from the Red Hot Chili Peppers, the Rolling Blackouts, the Mean Reds, Kate Earl, uh, Brother Reed Supreme, who I signed. And uh, so this is a small boutique label. John Frushanti is like putting out, if you ever get John Frushanti records off from this label, they're amazingly made. They're like on watercolor paper. It was just like a, something he was doing. I think he was a recovering addict and music that he couldn't put out with the Chili Peppers, like just like left to center. And like he was very specific about the things he wanted and the label was gracious enough to just help him. You know, like Warner Brothers is like, yo, do this with this dude. And I think it was amazing what they did. 
So if you ever find a John Frusciante record on record collection, it's worth the money. It's him being pure. Purer than he could be in one of the number one rock bands in American history. And being one of the greatest guitarists in the world ever. All that said, it was a rather new label. Uh, Knight and I just formed this relationship. This is the one that puts us in bed together. It was just a cool album. This is like solidifying. This is the second step. Uh, left foot, right foot. We, we, we're a unit now. And I'm looking at a picture I have, someone has of us online. And it's uh, uh, me, I put my tongue out. Like me and my dreads and putting my tongue out. Like we, there could not be a more odd couple in hip hop. Similar skin tone, about a, a, a what a whole foot difference in height, or a set eight, seven inches different in height, and our mentalities and our our taste and our quirks couldn't be more opposed. Yet here we are. I don't know many duos that have more music together. As I do my study, and I like to liken us to uh, in, in in my delusional mind. Delusions of Grandeur, uh, Bernie Toppin, and Elton John. Except for, I think he's the one that, if we could just reverse the same thing with my manager at the time, like, people, will, I would walk into meetings starting around this time, and my manager would have, like, a Gucci belt. First time I ever went to the Gucci store was to buy my manager a gift. I would go into meetings, and they would think he was a rapper. They would think he was Merce, because he's, like, the one in the fly clothes and diamonds and shit like that. Same thing with Ninth. Ninth is like, well, I remember we did, uh, maybe it was this album or another album. He came out he, like brand new white LRG. I'm like, where are you going? Man, it's a beautiful day. God's showing out. So I want to just, you know, compliment nature. I'm like, huh? Bro, I don't comb my hair. I don't shave. I roll out of bed. You know, I, I hygiene, you know, but other than that, like if I'm wearing something, it means something like these shoes are 230 of 223 and they're themed after the Incredible Hulk. Like, there has to be a story behind. I'm considered with the the lore of everything. I'm a nerd. What, what went into making this? Who made it? Why did they make it? What do the colors mean? And only, you know, one out of every 50,000 people are going to know this band or this, this type of, like, that's me. It has to mean something to me and connect me to somebody else that is into this weird thing that I'm into that we can become instant friends. As I get amazed from being a new kid at school. Like you wear this band shirt on the first day of school. So you find the people that are into the shit that you're into. I used to walk around with the Source magazine and, and it worked. Like I made friends for life because people see the Source or my Power Rangers lunchbox or this or that. And it starts a conversation and we become friends and it keeps the people who think I'm weird away. Dreads used to be that for me before Dreads became the popular hairstyle. No, I am not in a gang. Don't even ask me. Look at me, bro. You can tell fuck away from me with that shit i have no t- it just kills the bullshit instantly or and also like einstein like you you wake up you don't have to think about clothes or whatever nothing that's not contributing to my creative process me and ninth are not the same and that's great our arguments are few or far between because we're so not the same but we're very similar when it comes to family and morals and things we had one disagreement and we had disagreements about music and i don't know what was happening now but he had never yelled at me ever. And he was changing his daughter. I remember him telling that because I could hear the baby fussing. I'm ironing my clothes to go out for the day. At this point, I think I'd already like, I had a bad, used to have a bad habit of throwing my phone, which is resurrected with children, and punching things. So I had like dents in my knuckles and chips and scars on my hand. So, I don't know if I, I had, yeah, I had fucked up the the shower in our bathroom, arguing with the label about something. And I was ironing my clothes right by this bookcase that I got from Ikea. I'm the only, like, I'm a rap writer, like, move it. When I move, I got to have a bookcase. I'm bringing my books and my records. And I could even deal without the records. But some books I've been taking with me from house to house for years. So, I'm, I'm this bookcase. And on top of the bookcase is a crowbar. And I'm holding the phone to my ear, ironing my clothes. And Ninth is yelling at me because Bob James, I think it's Bob James called him. Like, why haven't, why didn't you clear the sample? The record, something happened. 
in the record had come out or something. Something happened. It was reviewed. Somebody told Bob and Bob called Nathan. And he's like, I admire this dude. He's cool with hip hop. And this is not the introduction I want. So ninth, this is the type of thing that makes Ninth Wonder upset. He's a very chill dude. He lost it on me. And I don't do well with people yelling at me. If I've told people, I've pulled up to people's house like, hold on, let's, anything you got to say it to my face so I can react how I want to react. So I don't say anything stupid. And you can see the look in my eyes and we can just understand where we're going with this as men before we start to typing or texting or talking crazy to one another. Let's just do it in person. Not that it was going to go there with me and him, but I don't like, and I do even with my mother, like there's a certain point, I, just, I don't like being yelled at. Don't re- don't put your hands on me. Don't raise your voice at me because it remind I'm tra- I'm traumatized. I was hit a lot as a child, and by people who I couldn't I wouldn't hit back per se. So now that I can, you're not my mama, bro. Don't try it. Don't try it. I'm I'm a little better now. But um, so back then I was like, he's yelling at me. I know he doesn't mean this. This is my friend, and the label fucked up. He's justifiably yelling at me, and his baby is screaming, which makes me even upset because I love the babies. I understand it. I don't understand his frustration fully because I haven't had kids yet. But now I definitely understand it. Not that it's the last thing you want to deal with when you have a baby that's upset. I see the crowbar. I go to punch the hang up and I go to punch the the thing and I stop because I see the crowbar. I turn. I hope I hopefully unplug the the iron. I grab the crowbar. I throw it in my Nissan Murano. I drive from Van Nuys to Santa Monica. I take the crowbar. I run into the building. I start chasing people around, yelling and screaming, chasing the president of the label, kicking shit over, throwing a temper tantrum, trying to break shit. It all, in retrospect, comes off as very lame and I would say even extremely contrived because I want to be Ice Cube. The woman who gave me a job at Raspian's named Daria, and she always like the the scene in the NWA movie when Ice Cube comes in a priority goes crazy. He smacked the plaque that was hanging over her head, and she still has it with a baseball bat. If America's Most Wanted blew up, you pay me the advance for the follow up. Now is that not what the fuck you said? That is what I said, but it is more complicated than that, Cube. Right there, are metrics. Come on, Brian. I got a baby on the way, and a house I just paid for up the strength of what you told me. I mean, you gave me your word. Q, but you just calm down. Calm down. I am just trying to give you what you want. You not? Now, Ben did the work. I gave you the product. Give me my money, Brian. When a man does the job, he's supposed to get paid. And you making it seem like I'm begging for some shit that's technically mine. Of course you are not begging. And I am not trying to be difficult, man. I promise you. But you can't help me, right? That's what you're telling me? My hands are tied, man. Hey. Should have kept your word, Brian. Jesus Christ, man! What, what the fuck are you doing, you? God damn it! So you know, I won't, it was not all contrived, but I had I had a good twenty minutes to get from Van Nuys Santa Monica. I drove really fast. But I, I think I could have talked myself down, or maybe I talked myself up. Had I been able to send a text message or FaceTime, it probably wouldn't have gone there. But uh, I went in. I don't really remember all I did. Somebody from the, a woman from the label pushed me outside. Tears, every, like, yo, stop. You're scaring everybody. What the fuck? I call Rhyme Sayers outside holding a crowbar. I convince, I tell them I never needed your money. I had the. Half of that, uh, my advance still in the bank. I never spent it. And I called Sadiq from Rhyme Stairs and said, can you give them the other half and they'll give us the album. That was a deal we made in the parking lot in front of the label. It's now a bike shop on Lincoln in Venice. Or it was a bike shop. I don't know what it is now. But it was a label. I'm standing lit. I can see now. Phone in one hand, crowbar in the other hand. A uh, young white woman. I don't know if she was crying. I believe she maybe she was. I don't know if I was crying. I probably was. I was that mad. Um, it just had built up from from the indie spirit. Like I was mad. Like uh, there's a friend of mine. Like there's an artist that got mad at him and said, "This is for Chuck Berry. Fuck you for Chuck." Like if you don't believe in epigenetics and are like, I am carrying a rage, and it just all just from every independent artist, from every rapper that got fucked, like. This was my moment. 
Like I said, maybe some of it's contrived, maybe it's not. I felt pure, and it all worked out for the best. So I think it came from a pure place. I had had a fuck enough. Little missteps all the way up to this point. Fuck these people, fuck this label. So cool. Then I'm like, fuck it. I just started dating um, a little celebrity. I'm going to fly my celebrity friend out. We're going to Vegas. Now I'm drinking. <laughs> I'm getting wasted this weekend, and we're going to start over. Murray's Revenge will drop on Rhyme Stairs, and I'm back where I belong. I should have never fucking tried this label shit. Fuck all this. Because I didn't need the money. I didn't have any kids. You know, I'm still waiting on my royalty check. I know Def Jux is going to have a heavy royalty check for me. Like, I'm good, bro. Fuck you mean? I'm out of here. That was it for me. I was done. Me and Knife can keep doing albums together every five days every, every Thanksgiving. And this is my life. I'm happy with this. I like the person I'm creating music with. These are the beats I've wanted my whole life. I'm getting the response that's decent. I'm healthy. The celebrity crush I've had for years. Actually returning my call. We're going to go. I'm, I'm going to get married and support her. Fuck all that. Love going to Vegas. Going to go to Vegas, sit by the pool. Yeah, and, and baseball season will start, so I don't know. That has to make it around April. So maybe the record if the record had just dropped or something. I, may, I don't feel like it hadn't dropped because we were going to buy the record or something. I don't know. Or buy the rights or something. I don't know if it had just dropped. No, it was spring training. Right before the record was about to drop. That's what it, the promos had went out. And I was like, we'll buy the inventory. We'll buy the masters. Chill. We have the, that's what it was. And I think around this time that uh, Rhymster had just dealt with all the mm, food controversy. And we had talked about that, like how I was, you know, thank you to Sadiq from Rhymster. He's such, uh, been uh, such a window into real label problems and shit like that. And, and being an open book about that. He's tight lipped about a lot of things. A uh, very quiet guy, but he's always been very honest with me when I ask him for business advice and him telling me the the doom story full out. So I had an understanding of, okay, we have these records sitting here. If we buy this and this, we buy the inventory, we can ship out these records, fulfill all the orders. Like, boom, I was ready. That was what it was. The promos had gone out. I think Bob James had heard that the promo was and saw a review that we didn't clear Nautilus. Because every writer worth their salt is going to mention that record on the record. Whether they love it or hate it, they're going to come for it. And they're going to mention that. And he's going to hear about it because he's in tune. That's what it was. I'm like, hold off on the release. Whatever it was. I guess there's no way not to mention. I, I'll try not to mention that. As you figure it out, you figure it out. As far as like the label. The vice president that I, of the label that I'm also threatening and, and probably chasing around the office, I don't remember everything. Like I said, it was kind of corny and, and cringy for me now, being who I am, but I was very serious at that moment. Was the son of the president of Warner Brothers. I had no idea. I get to Vegas and I hear this and I'm like, oh shit. I'm about to, all this talk, like, these are the things I tell myself. I could have just stayed at home and been a crip for real. If I get go to jail for chasing some surfers around an office about a fucking Bob James sample with a crowbar, I am the dumbest motherfucker in the history of Mid-City, California. My friend just got killed. I'm risking my freedom, not because I'm revenging his death, but because I chose to do something that's a little more productive. And here I come with my street sensibilities and my anger issues fucking off this opportunity. This is a real rich person's son that I'm threatening to hit with the crowbar. I am going to jail. I'm in Vegas like, fuck it, bro. I, either I'm going OTR, I'm going on a run, no nori. Or I'm, I think maybe that's what got the drinking going too. Or fuck it, I'm going to live it up to this weekend and go to jail. Shit, I gotta do as much fucking important as I can. I gotta go turn myself in next week. Dodgers were having the best uh, best start to their uh, spring training, I think, too. I remember being at, drunk, so drunk at the bar, like, telling the, or at the pool, telling the waitress, like, do you know that the Los Angeles Dodgers are the best team in the world, right? I, I remember that. 
And I think that's where I started thinking about buying season tickets that year. I I, I don't know all how all this or where all like I said the time is off, but boy did I, I did I screw the pooch as as some people say. I fucked up big time. I am going to go to jail. I've been to jail Inglewood County or holding tank one night. And if you listen to the podcast, that was a huge problem for me. My crip adjacent lifestyle is no longer adjacent once I go. It's, and I got a Cloverdale tattoo. Like I, I'm from somewhere and I got to do something when I get there. If I, if I go down, not only that, but my homie has three daughters that I'm trying to be there for and support. Not no more. What was I thinking? I wasn't. I was trying to think of like, I didn't want to break my, I would have been a, Beating that bookcase to death with my crowbar would have been the best thing I could have done at that point. What possessed me to take a crowbar, but this is my music. This is what I'm saying. I'm not making music for egos. If everything with ego and money would have checked out, like, okay, I'm still on a major label. I would, if I was the other rappers, I know I would have been trying to get upstream to Warner Brothers instead of arguing with this label. I would have been like, okay, I'm going to put this record out. We're going to do really well. I got a high power management team and then we're going to get to Warner Brothers and then we're going to go triple platinum and if I was my now self, I'd be like, oh, I provide for my kids. How many more opportunities could I provide for other people if I can get on Warner Brothers and promote a positive message? Nah, I was indie backpack hip hop. You, Oh, and that's what it, yeah. The original version of Merge Avenged, if success has always been the best form of, uh, if, the de- if, the soul, if a soul is avenged through the deeds of a friend, the success has always been the best form of revenge. The end. And it cut off the end. The original copies of this record don't have the end. It goes, uh, for if a soul is avenged through the deeds of a friend, the success has always been the best form of revenge. They-, they didn't listen to the fucking final thing when they approved the master. That was it too. That, and so then when Ninth called, I had just heard that. And when Ninth called me, I lost my shit. I'm, I'm making a dedication to my dead friend. I need that the end to be there. It's a little thing and people can fill in the blank, but fuck that. I want to say it. The end of my anger. The end end of the cycle where I go and kill somebody else. Let me get that off, motherfucker. And I'm getting hyped. Now I can see work. Now I'm getting hyped just talking about it. Now you got my homeboy yelling at me while he's changing the baby? And we've never had a, we've never had a fight fight. Night Wonder's raising his voice to me? I know my brother doesn't want to do that. So I got to take all this anger and give it to somebody. And yeah, I'm, even if I can go deeper, I am still grieving. The loss of my friend. You think that every day I pick these girls up from the daycare or from the babysitter or go to the house. I'm not furious again. For them, for me, it's not a problem for me to do the drive. It's not a problem for me to give the money. It's not a problem for me to spend time. The fact that I have to do it and the reason I have to do it, I'm reminded consistently. When I see his family members, when I write them in prison, this was not the time for this to happen. What happens next? Tune in next week. 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 Thanks for listening to the Best Rapper in LA podcast. Make sure you subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. Make sure you never miss an episode by subscribing on Spotify, Apple, wherever it is. If you like the show, leave a review on Apple Music or Spotify. And to support the podcast directly, go to patreon.com slash M-U-R-S 316, Merch 316. See y'all next week. Peace. Peace.